Although the U.S. dietary guidelines improve each year, the government still includes some foods that the medical community recognizes as pro-inflammatory. Looking to offer another dietary guideline, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine has published what they call the Power Plate, a dish they say can lower the risk of many diseases, including obesity, heart disease, cancer, and stroke. Now we have four main groups of foods. The first one are the legumes. Um, you can see there's so many kind, different kinds of uh, legumes. We have the pinto beans, the black beans, lentils, um, also garbanzo and the soybeans. This group of um, uh, food will provide us with uh, protein, a, a good source of protein, and also fiber, lots of iron and calcium, which is very important. The next group we have the grains. Um, and you can see different types of, of rice, quinoa, oatmeal, pasta, bread, tortillas, all these um, are part of, of the grain group. This group will provide us with the complex carbohydrates, fiber, minerals, vitamins. She says it's important to consume whole grains, for example, brown rice and not white, because when grains are processed, they lose nutrients and go from being complex carbohydrates to simple ones that can affect the functioning of the body. For example, if, if, if you take the fiber and all the nutrients out of the, the grain, you will, you will, your, your body will process it different, uh, differently. So when you eat uh, white rice or white bread or white pasta, these will spike your blood sugars. You should look out for the word whole on the ingredient label. For example, whole grain, whole barley, whole oats, whole wheat. Look out for words like refined or enriched, which means the grains have been processed. The next food group in this dish are the veggies. It's huge. I mean, and this is just a simple, very small uh, example of the variety that you can find. So I try to add different colors, different textures, different parts of the plant. For, for example, we have uh, the leaves. The leafy greens are so important because they will provide us with calcium, iron, and folate. This is the, the, the amazing group that contains lots of um, antioxidants which are good for us um, so try to add all kind of colors all type of colors like greens purple reds yellow and so you you get more color you get more antioxidants and last but not least the healthy fats all the the essential fats like the omega-3s and these three main seeds like the chia uh, flax and hemp. These will provide us with omega-3s, very important also for the kids because they need those for their developing uh, brain and um, also they need fat. They need fat to grow and to develop. Nuts and avocados are also included as healthy fats and although they don't have cholesterol because that only comes from animal sources, she says adults should consume them in moderation. If you're looking for examples of plant-powered meals, Dr. T. Colin Campbell's Center for Nutrition Studies has compiled a long list of recipes they hope will inspire you to fill your plate with food that is healthy but also tasty. If we make sure that our plate has rice, we can have some beans, right? Then we can have a salad with some dark leafy greens and seasonal fruits and vegetables. Something to watch out for, they say, is highly processed vegan foods. You can have french fries when you're a vegan, so it's important not to lose focus on the difference between the two. Plant-based means just that, focusing on your meals being, being plants. When you're vegan, then you're just not consuming any animal product. And if you miss having meat on your plate, she says you can try swapping it out for mushrooms. In the process of adjusting to this new lifestyle, if you want to have something that the texture simulates some animal protein, mushrooms are an amazing alternative. Why? Because they're meaty in consistency, they hold a lot of flavor, but it's also important to highlight that they're in amazingly powerful in, in boosting the immune system. They have tons of protein um, and they have tons of fiber as well. So we can start here 
Cornimini mushrooms are baby portobello mushrooms. It's the same thing at different stages of growth. So these are amazing. You could throw them on the grill. You can use them as a sandwich and they're a delicious alternative as well. These are king oyster mushrooms. They're an amazing alternative to chicken and fish. For example, you can grab these and slice them up, sear them in a cast iron skillet and they're similar to scallops or you can shred them using a fork and they can be shredded meat, shredded chicken. So some people say that mushrooms don't taste like anything, tofu doesn't taste like anything. Neither does chicken unless you season it. So let's open our minds to the possibilities of mushrooms and tofu. All you have to do is season it, give it that flavor, that umami that you love, and then you can introduce them into your meals and incorporate them better. In our next episode, we show you how you can increase the health benefits of food by incorporating spices, herbs, and combining different ingredients that allow you to better absorb nutrients.